Good to see each of you this morning, and we are uh, glad that you have avoided what I keep hearing about of a virus that's running around uh, Hydro and Weatherford and Clinton and some here, and and, uh, I'm glad all of you are are better from that or have never taken that. I know Rob's had a case of that, and and, uh, Elizabeth's had a case of that, and so glad you're here this morning. Hope you're blessed by being here. For the last uh, couple of weeks, I have teased the idea, or I have uh, kind of led you to believe that we would begin this morning the fourth book of the New Testament, the book called John. And so you have those first four books, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. And Matthew and Mark and Luke are very, very similar. They tell the stories of Jesus. John does also, but John is very different. And we're going to try to digest the book of John. It'll not be a quick study. It will take, I suspect, at least a year of making our way through the Gospel of John. And the question is, who is Jesus? John seems to be trying to ask this question and then answer this question, who is Jesus? In fact, he'll end the book by telling us, I have written everything I've written so that you may believe and so that you may know this man named Jesus. And I know that seems like a strange thing for us to be talking about for a year because everybody in this audience knows Jesus. You've known him for a long, long time. And you, you can, you, anybody, any one of you could stand here and tell us stories from the life of Jesus. And yet maybe if we go through the Gospel of John, maybe we'll learn more about him. Maybe we'll see him more clearly. And maybe we'll find something that will be beneficial to the way we live our lives. And I've also told you that I really wish that we could start in chapter 2. Because chapter 2 would be so much easier. But we have to start in chapter 1. And we're going to start with the first three verses of chapter 1. And you know these verses. You've heard these verses. We speak them so quickly and we speak them so often. And yet they are filled with really, really important things. And some of these lessons are going to be like the one today. Some of these lessons are not going to be so riveting. Some of of them aren't going to capture your attention so well. This may be one of them. But I want you to read these words with me this morning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. And so there you have it. There you have the beginning of what we call the Gospel of John. And it starts with these words, in the beginning. Now, I think he's talking about the beginning of our world as we know it. I think he's talking about how we begin to mark time. But I will tell you that with God, there is no beginning. And with God, there is no end. We understand that. We use the word eternal when we talk about God. He's always been here. He's always going to be here. And it's hard for us to digest. Do any of you remember being in the seventh grade and taking a math class? And they're trying to get you ready so that someday you can understand algebra? And they show you a number line, and they have on that number line kind of in the center of it the the zero, there in the zero, and it goes one and two and three and four, and then at the end of that line it has a little arrow trying to show you that those numbers can go on forever. You can just keep, keep adding numbers. And then if you go to the left of the zero, it's a negative one and a negative two and a negative three, and it's got a little arrow out there, and it goes on forever, and we call it infinity. We call it infinite. 
It just keeps going and going and going. And God is infinity. God is infinite. But our world is finite. Our world has a beginning. And if you read what we're going to read in Peter on Wednesday nights, Peter's going to say this world has an ending. It has a beginning. It has an ending. And you and I understand that. You and I have a beginning. In, in fact, it's, it's very common during our announcement time for someone to say, well, this person over here has a birthday this week. Or this person over here has a birthday today. And, and we tend to remember our birth dates. And we tend even sometimes to celebrate those birth dates. I don't celebrate them any longer. I quit that a long time ago. I don't even want to talk about it. Now, if I were a little bit younger, I might want to talk about it more. But we have a beginning, and we remember our beginning. And we could go out to our cemetery a mile and a half away from this building, and we could look at these grave markers, and every single one will have the beginning It'll have the end. And yet, though it's not a part of our lesson, I will tell you that when you and I are born into the kingdom of God, that's really not the end, and we become infinity. We keep going on with God forever and forever. Everybody understand that? When we are born into the kingdom, this mortal takes up on itself immortality. So in the beginning, when this world all started, and now the next phrase, was the Word. Now, there are theologians that can talk about this phrase, this word logos, or logos, whatever you want to say about it. They can talk about it for hours. But you know I'm no theologian. And I'm no Bible scholar, and I am at best just a lay person who speaks here week after week. So when I look at the Word, in the beginning was the Word, I, I go back to the book of Genesis. And I go back to chapter 1. Because in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, it, it, it talks about how this all began. And I know there are people who argue about how it began. But when you see what we're going to say, see this morning, I don't know how you argue about this so easily. In the beginning, as God created the heaven and the earth, it says the earth was formless. Formless. It was empty. Darkness was over everything. Everybody got that picture? There was just nothing out there. There was just nothing. And God said, did you catch that? And God said, the word, and God said, let there be light. There was light. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. It was so. And God said, let, let all the water on the earth be gathered together in one place. Let's create some dry land. And God said, let that land produce vegetation. It was so. And God said, let's put some lights in that big expanse up there. And it was so. And God said, let's just take all this water and put it in different spots. So it's all together. It was so. And God said, let's, let's let all the, the, the plants come and bring vegetation up on the earth. And finally, in verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our own image. And everything begins with, and God said, in the beginning was the what? There was nothing. There was nothing out there. But God began to speak. God began to speak. 
and things began to appear. And the word, watch the next phrase, was with God. Was with God. How, how do I comprehend that? This word, it'll say in a moment, he, he, this, this word is a person, and he's with God. And he, and he was God. How, how, do you, how do you be with him, and you, you are him? And so all of our lives, is it not true all of your life? You've heard this word Trinity. I've never totally understood it. And I'm sure you haven't either. In all of our lives, we've heard that there is God the Father, and there's God the Son, and there's God the Spirit. And, and I've said so many times, there, it, it's the God who is, and it's the God who came, and it's the God who stayed. And it seems that, that the Word was with God, but the Word was God. The Word was God. You remember how we've talked about the end of the Gospel of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament? And when Jesus is all finished with all of his work on this earth and he's about to ascend, he looks at his apostles and he said, I, I want you to go, just go everywhere. Go all over the world. And I want you to teach people what I've been teaching you. And I want you to baptize them in the name of, you remember? The Father and the Son and the Spirit. I want you to baptize them in the name of God. But the Father is God, and Jesus is God, and the Spirit is God, and there's no big God and little God. And I, I, can't, I can't figure it all out. But in the beginning was the Word. And God said, and it began to appear, and the Word was with God. And Jesus, want to know who Jesus is? Jesus is God. And if you miss this fundamental, foundational point going through the New Testament and going through the Gospel of John, you miss so much of the power of the story of the Bible. Jesus is every bit God. And He is, watch the next phrase, Creator. He was with God. He is God. And all things were made by Him. There's not anything, there's not anything that was made that was made without Him. He is Creator. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. Creation is different from the word miracle. The creation was not a miracle. Does that surprise you? A miracle is that which happens on this earth that defies the laws of nature. It defies the laws of physics. It defies the laws of thermodynamics. It defies the law of gravity. That's what a miracle is. In fact, in chapter 2, Jesus will turn water, ordinary water, into vintage wine. It'll be the best they've, they've, they've tasted. It'll be amazing. Instantaneously. It doesn't happen that way. That defies the laws of physics and of nature. That's what a miracle is. Do you remember in the Old Testament a story about a young man? He he's, he's borrowed an axe. He borrowed an axe. He's out chopping and, and, and the handle breaks or the axe head fall, falls off somehow. 
lands in a pool of water. He knows he's in big trouble. You ever borrowed anything and it broke? That's why I don't borrow. I do my best not to borrow anything from anybody because sure as I borrowed it, it breaks. And he, what, what do I do? And so the, the real prophet comes over, does a little something there, and that piece of iron begins to float. I'm telling you, that is a miracle. It defies the laws of nature. Now, you want to try it? Why don't you go out to a farm pond today and take a diamond ring, make sure it's one that's worth five or six thousand dollars, and toss it out into the water and then see if you can just make it float, come back up to you. You know that's not going to work. The Bible is filled with miracles. That is not a miracle. Creation is not a miracle. There was nothing here. It was space. It was, it was blackness. It was space. It was, it was nothing. And God began to speak. And I'll tell you, if he hadn't put a moon in the, in the picture, the gravity thing wouldn't work so well. And God spoke it into existence. Now what you and I see is a very, very narrow picture of it. So we have seen tall mountains. We have seen desert sands. We have seen large bodies of water. You've stood on a beach and you can see water only just as far as you can see. And you know it goes on beyond that. And we have seen glaciers. We've seen massive rivers. And we've seen trees changing colors and the wind begins to blow after a cold night like last night and the leaves are falling off all the trees. Did you notice this morning? And in Romans chapter 1, Paul says, that's enough. You ought to be able to look at that and know that God is God. You ought to be able to know that He's God. But I'm telling you, what you and I see is not even... If I said the half of it, that would be so much an understatement. Burke's going to show us a picture. It's the Milky Way galaxy. That, that thing is trillions of miles apart. Somewhere in all those little light spots and dark spots is a little tiny pebble called Earth where you and I live. And if you compare the size of this pebble to the size of the sun, there's no comparison. And that sun has been, that sun has been having atomic ex explosions over and over and over again. And part of its purpose is to give us light for the day. And part of its purpose is to give us heat. And part of its purpose is to give us energy. And God put it at just the right spot, just the right distance, so that it wouldn't melt us, so that it wouldn't freeze us. And he knew that he knew that this, this earth was a ball. He made it a ball, and so he, he knew that he couldn't, couldn't just leave us in one spot. Because some people always dark, some people always so he made this earth to start rotating. So little, little thing just rotates. So we have night and day that way. And, and then he said, that, "That's not going to work completely." So he made it. He made it go all the way around the sun. It takes about three hundred sixty-four to sixty-five and a fourth days. Three hundred sixty-five and a fourth days to get us around there. But that, that changes seasons and it does. But then he put all those stars 
and he put other planets that we have yet to see in the Milky Way galaxy that have any life, and it's all there for a purpose. And then look at the next picture, because beyond the Milky Way galaxy, we find another galaxy. It's the nearest one to us. And it's filled with stars, and it's filled with planets, and it's all out there for a reason. And in the beginning, it was blackness. In the beginning, there was nothing. But God created it all in a majestic way so that we right here could exist. Now, now you tell me. You tell me how it happened other than God speaking it into existence. You want to tell me that it exploded? There was a great explosion. It all happened just like this. How in the world? Remember how often I've told you that you have to choose to believe? Faith starts with choosing to believe. And you have to choose to believe things that don't seem believable. So do you believe that story in the Old Testament where an axe head is in the bottom of a water pool and it floats? Do you believe it? I, yeah, I believe it. I choose to believe it. And now I'm so confident, I believe with all my might that it happened. Tell me how you would choose to believe that just some bomb went off where the bomb came from, I don't know. And, and all, that's, all that appeared up there with trillions of miles and trillions of stars. And, 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 and the sun is just perfect in our little space right here. And everything's in precision. It just happened. And we haven't even gotten to how he said, how he said, let us, watch the term us, Father, Son, Spirit, let us make man in our own image. And he reaches down and takes some of that dirt that he's made, that he made from nothing. There was nothing there. He made the dirt. He made the rocks. He made the elements. He made the chemical, the chemistry periodic table. He made it. And he made people. So complex are we. And, and you're going to try to tell me that you came from some single cell, something out there somewhere? And then I would ask you how it got there, but I, you see, people, people have always been trying to tell us there isn't a God. People have always been trying to tell us that this story is not true. In fact, there are people who tell you the first three verses of the book of John are just false. There are some people who have written their own version of the Bible to eliminate those, those words and change those words. There are religions of the world that will say Jesus was a good man, but he certainly wasn't God. And if Burke puts what I've been saying right now on the internet, I promise you there will be people there already have been people who will say in long things against it that I am so wrong because they'll say Jesus was only a man. And John says he's creator. He's God. And he made all of this. Isn't that something? And unless you start with that foundation, John's going to make a big argument. You're not going to get this story right. You're not going to get it right. And so do I like how people try to tell us that God is not real and Jesus is not real? And they come up with all these explanations that are preposterous. They don't make any sense. And yet... And yet, more and more and more and more, the majority of this world believes the other story. And less and less and less people believe what we are talking about this morning. And 
people go off and they become PhD physicists. It means they're really, really, really smart. And they learn so much. And they learn about all these things we've been talking about far more than I can speak about them. But somehow they get convinced that it's not about God. Who is Jesus? All I know so far, if I just wipe my mind clean and I start with John, all I know so far is that he was with God and he was God. And he is creator. Now, I believe the Father was creator too. And I believe the Spirit was creator too. But Jesus is creator. And it's going to make this story that you know I'm going to talk about at some point of him coming to this earth. It's going to make this story of him dying for us. It's going to make it so powerful that he who has always been, would step out of that place and come here. Why? Because I'm a mess. Because the world's a mess. It's easier for me to talk about the world than it is about me. But I'm going to tell you, last night I got tired of watching football. It doesn't take me all that long. I'll like it for a while. So we've been recording movies because when our granddaughters come, they like to watch the, the Hallmark kind of movies and the love story kind of movies. And when our grandsons come, they like to watch the cowboy shows. So I got them both recorded. Now there's a new channel out called Great American Family. It's really good. A lot of the Hallmark people have left there and they're, they're, they're making movies there. But somehow I had this one recorded from Hallmark last night. And thankfully we were only into it for seven or eight minutes. It starts pushing something that is so different from what I believe from the Bible. And he gets so aggravated. Oh yeah, we turned it off. I deleted it. But it's easy for me to look out there and say, oh, the world's just full of sin. I'm getting really tired of it, by the way. But then I take a look at myself and realize I by myself am not lily white. But here comes the Creator. Here comes the one who is God. And He washes me to be white. Isn't it an amazing story? But step by step by step, we're going to learn more about Jesus. And so, we're going to pause and take the Lord's Supper. And in the Lord's Supper, we're going to remember the one who was with God and the one who was God and who was one who made all things and the one who stepped out of heaven and came to this earth for us. For us.